Hey Pheasant Lane fam, I hope you're doing well. My name's Robert and this is Pheasant Lane Farm. Today is Butcher Day. See those ears perk up? They know. Luckily, Adam and Jim are safe today. Uh, we're running in 65 meat birds that Amber and I bought five and a half weeks ago today. So we'll get into all of that. Real quick, I wanna do a quick recap. Uh, I've been getting some emails. Hasn't been a lot of videos the last month. Uh, I apologize for that. And I'm just gonna tell you, there's been three major factors. Number one, I just finished up summer classes last week. Somehow pulled a 3.5 GPA. Summer classes kicked my butt. I wasn't expecting 30 hours a week in homework. Uh, that pretty much covered one of my classes. So uh, it's been a decade since I've been in college and uh, way different than I thought it was gonna be. Number two. As you can see here, we got our steer pens finished at our place. Adam and Jim had to move out of my dad's. My dad is getting ready to tear down his big, I want to say 1860s, give or take a decade or two, barn. It's a beautiful barn. Um, there's not a whole lot wrong with it. But with that being said, it's going to take about $125,000 to get it to where it needs to be. The biggest cost associated with that is foundation work. Even if you spend all that money, it still doesn't fit the needs that we have now. A lot of times those old barns were built to fit um, horse-drawn equipment. And now that, you know, trailers are getting longer and bigger, Dad has a uh, fairly large fifth-wheel camper that he wants to keep inside. Uh, it's been sitting out since he bought it new two years ago. The 32-foot Diamond C trailer we just bought, uh, that's about uh, 40 foot overall. And uh, you stick all that money to a barn and it really doesn't fix the solution of not having space to put your implements and trailers away so it's going to be sad to see it go on the bright side it's getting upcycled recycled and reused for a lot of things i'm bringing some wood here some beams in case we ever build a new house uh, i want to bring, build some of the old stuff here and incorporate it into our new farm uh, so that was number two. Third thing however you want to do that third thing it's county fair time uh, we've been getting ready our county fair kicks off next week They've added a day to it, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it kind of throws the schedules of everything off. So you got to haul in the weekend before. You can't haul in until the weekend after. Um, you know, it's about uh, 10, 11 days of just pure chaos. We're taking three horses this year, and things have just been nuts. Kiddo blew a tire in her show cart. She does like eight different events, so uh, a lot of practicing. She's been practicing all summer. She rides them even through the winter. But it's always those final details, making sure everything's in the camper, everything's in the trailer that needs to go, not forgetting anything. So that has been that. On the other side of things, if you guys have watched the news, everything that's going on out in Texas, guys are selling off their herds because of drought and feed shortages. I said, you know what? I think it's time to go buy two more steers. Uh, these guys going in about a month. Um, kill date should have been a little sooner. When I booked that kill date a year ago, it's the earliest one I could find. I ran them over a scale when we left Dad's house. They average about 1,350 pounds right now. Um, I'd like for them to be under 1,400 when we take them in. Their rate of gain was a little better than I expected. A friend of mine owns a show herd, so we went down and bought two more calves off of her. Unfortunately, I couldn't get Herefords. Uh, their Herefords go for a premium, um, and I wasn't going to spend $4,000 on a heifer right now. So I brought back an Angus Simmental cross and another one that's an Angus cross with something she had to look in the breed book. But I'll show you a quick uh, little video snippet of those guys. Good morning, boys. Big thank How you, you to everybody that's been today, out here huh? helping me get these steer pens and everything ready. So much? before uh, we go any farther in this video, let's go back in time a little bit. Five and a half weeks to be exact. And I'll catch up with you a little bit later. Well, got meat chickens part two. This is going to be our second and last batch for the year ordered 65 this time amber's in there making sure they all know where the water is um, so far there's two boxes in there and another box right here so far no dead ones these shipped out on what i believe was wednesday it is now first thing friday morning the post office called so Yep, these ones came out of Hoover Hatchery. Um, Eagle's Nest couldn't get us any birds right away. They offered the ship date we wanted. So, um, real quick, we use for the brooders, this is just a bladder out of an IBC tote. We use them for firewood. So, uh, we try to kind of upcycle everything we can. 
So I thought, you know, a lot of people use the kind of galvanized brooders right there. Sorry for the messy garage. These work out a lot better. They're lightweight. You can move them around. They're food grade. Um, these ones are. I wouldn't go putting birds in something that had oil or farm chemicals, but these all came to us food grade. So we recycle those. And um, that is that. Get these guys put in there. All right. Chicks are happy so far. We have not had any dead birds, which I'm kind of impressed with. Hours. Yeah, it's been two hours. But I mean, <laughs> they hatched uh, two days ago. So they've been sitting in the shipping crates. They're eating well. They're drinking well. Happy birds. More food in there than what we'd usually put in there. Uh, we're on our way to a wedding uh, for tonight. We'll be home late tomorrow night. Mom's coming over to do horse chores, goat chores, and pig chores, and then uh, hopefully she doesn't have to mess with the chickens. So my mom's kind of short, so I don't think she'd even be able to uh, bend over and get stuff out of the brooder. So two water tanks, three feeders for 65 birds, and we are ready to go to a wedding. take them a little bit before they realize they can go into the shade. <clears throat> Oh yeah. All right, so here is our setup for loading out the broilers. Got the truck and the trailer backed up here. We found it's just easier to throw them in the back of a stock trailer. Uh, got the coolers in the front half of the cut gate and the chickens will go in the back on fresh bedding. One tractor here and another one over here. Um, we pull them off food the day before at the request of the butchers. So that is that. Just rinsed out coolers. My pants are soaking wet, but I'll change before we leave. So waiting on Amber and Kiddo to get out here. And then uh, my dad's here. The chickens do try and jump out of the slider. So uh, it's his job just to hold the slider shut. Uh, so they don't jump out. We have a pretty good uh, system set up. Kiddo gets in the tractors, pushes all the chickens forward. Amber and I put them in the trailer. So. We will get that done and on our way. All loaded up. Took about 15 minutes. And 65 happy chickens. You know, it's always sad anytime you butcher anything on the farm, but knowing that you gave them a good life. They were happy, always on fresh grass. There's a lot of peace of mind. And knowing that you gave them the best life you could.
stay in there, buddies. All right, we're unloaded back door here, a place called J and J Poultry Processing. Drop the birds off, put them in crates of 10 each. Um, stack your coolers over there on the other side and go inside and tell them how you want them cut. And that turns into some beautiful chickens. Uh, this one right here weighed 4.12 pounds and most of these we had uh, split in half. So three coolers this time. Uh, this one's a big uh, Arctic 145, an Arctic 65, and then I don't know how big that is. That's usually uh, what we put our live fish in that we catch on the lake. So wipe them down with bleach every time. It does say fish only, but I was running out of coolers today. Last time we had to bring uh, two more big coolers. So, And uh, that looks like a whole bag of chicken necks. So keep those packed on ice. Yeah, that one's 4.3 pounds. And yep, most of them are split in half. That's the way we like them. That was a big one. That's 4.61. I think he said uh, our average throughout this whole batch of 65 birds was right at 4 pounds, uh, which is what most people want. You ready to go home? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, this is almost the end of the video, and we're going to get into the important information, at least the stuff I find interesting which is kind of the breakdown uh, of weights and how many birds we started with versus how many birds we ended with. And we'll get to that shortly. I know I'm going to get comments, people saying, why don't you just buy the equipment and do it yourself? Well, for a number of reasons. Number one, J&J &J Poultry Processing in Holgate, Ohio, they have this down to a science. The building they have was custom built and designed for processing chickens. It's, as you guys saw, we load them out of the tractors into the back of the stock trailer. We had the coolers already washed and stacked in the front of the cut gate. And uh, it's less than an hour drive from us. We transfer them into their crates, sit them in the back room on some dollies, and that's that. We come back an hour and a half, two hours later, and the birds are chilling on ice. The other thing is, finding a group of hands to come out when you want to have chickens processed um, and trying to get some extra help isn't always easy to come by. People are busy, we're busy. A couple of my buddies have actually gone out and bought all the equipment to do the chickens themselves. And then when I called them like, hey, can you guys do our chickens this week? Everybody's always got something coming up. So for us, $2.50 a bird, don't hold me to that price. Uh, if your birds are heavy, heavier, they're a little more. If you want them cut into halves, quarters, or eight pieces to a bag, that's an additional cost. But for $2.50 a bird, I can't go out and buy that stuff, and it's just easier. Um, especially with the whole limited use of my right arm, I'm not going to go buy all the equipment and then, you know, keep begging for friends to come over here and help. So, these guys are masters of their craft. I believe the price is very fair. They, uh, they do one batch at a time. Between every batch, they go through and they clean their whole shop area. So uh, right here, I'll add some images from their shop. They gave us a really cool tour. It was the first time my dad had been over there to kind of see this process. And he called me late last night. And he goes, man, I just can't. These guys have this down to a science. I'm still amused at how awesome this whole experience was. So we got our freezers full. It's a good feeling knowing that you gave those chickens the best life you could. They were always on green grass, good food. And a big compliment we got both times we took chickens to J&J &J Poultry Processing is they said, hey, these are like the best birds we've had this month. You guys did everything absolutely perfect. I feel like there's always room for improvement. But with that being said, uh, we'll get into the numbers. But real quick, one more thing I want to say is two and a half years ago when I started this YouTube channel, um, we just bought this place. It was kind of a diamond in the rough. It's still a diamond in the rough. We're, we're gaining traction. Uh, we got, you know, more livestock here now and a new barn and all that stuff. But one of the first subscribers to this channel was a gentleman named Chris. Uh, we, we became good friends over YouTube. Then we became Facebook friends and we're always sending stuff back and forth. And we're in a lot of the same groups and same interests. Yesterday, I actually stopped by his house and got to meet him face to face. That's always a weird feeling when you meet someone for the first time that you've kind of been friends with, you know, on social media. But he invited us over to his house. He has a new beautiful shop he just built. And uh, he doesn't live too far from where we had the chickens processed. So 
So it was really cool to meet Chris. Um, you know, got to introduce him to my dad, Amber, and kiddo. So it was just a very cool day in general. So let's get down to the numbers of our first year of doing chickens. The first batch we bought were from Eagle's Nest Hatchery. And uh, one thing people tell us is you can have two batches identical and they're going to go totally different directions. So Eagle's Nest Hatchery, we started with 100 birds, 80 made it to slaughter. 13 of them were natural death. Uh, natural cause death I guess you could say um, we had a few in the beginning you know you just find a couple random dead chicks in the brooders and then we didn't have a death for a long time and then like the two weeks before we sent them into slaughter I felt like every day or every other day we'd go out and we just find a dead chicken it looked healthy nothing that attacked it so you just don't know these things are kind of little genetic monsters if you want to look at how fast their rate of gain is where you can take a chick and then five and a half weeks later it's four and a half pounds four to four and a half pounds that's pretty crazy if you ask me so first batch of chickens we raised those seven and a half weeks uh, we bought them my brother and i went and picked them up put them in the brooders seven and a half weeks we took them to butcher our average weight on that batch of 80 was five and a half pounds the guys at j and j poultry processing said you know these birds look beautiful they're perfect we can tell they weren't sitting in their own manure all that type of stuff and uh, they said why don't you cut 10 days off of them and see see if you like it a lot of people uh, prefer a little bit smaller chicken so this time we went five and a half weeks so we actually went two weeks shorter the problem being these guys are only open on saturdays if we would have taken them till next saturday um, which would have been six and a half weeks i think would have been like our happy medium spot the problem would be that we're kind of into our county fair and I can't really pull the trailer away for an afternoon to go over there and do it. So first batch of 100 birds, 80 made it to slaughter. Our average weight at seven and a half weeks was five and a half pound chickens. Second batch, um, we took them down at five and a half weeks. We bought 65 from a different hatchery and never lost one. We figured, well, we want 50 birds. We'll buy 65 in case we have some issues. Well, go figure, we got 65 shipped to us uh, out of Michigan. I'll put the name of the hatchery in here. It's uh, skipping my mind right now. But we ordered 65 chicks and 65 chickens made it to slaughter. Five and a half weeks, that uh, our average was just under four pounds of chicken, like 3.9 and some change. So there were some smaller, there's two real small ones in there that I think really affected our average. But a lot of the chickens were... Um, that 4.2 4.3 pound everybody seems really happy with that size so you never know what's going to happen with chickens and that's what these guys said is you can have two identical batches you can do everything the same some of them you're going to have a higher mortality rate than the others and there's just so many variables that come into play we feed a kalmbach uh, meat chick food or meat bird i believe they call it um i believe it's 22 percent i'll add a picture of the bag in here sorry mosquito um but we've been very happy with that we put them on that from start to finish um the first batch we did something a little different we did start them on turkey feed someone recommended that i don't think i really saw a difference um but you know we're always just trying different things but the main thing is we have some beautiful farm raised chickens in the freezer that'll last us until next year when we do it again um, like I said, we did 165 birds, or we started with 165 birds this year, 80 made it the first round, and 65 made it to the second round. So a big shout out to J&J Poultry Processing. They gave us a tour. We are the last uh, appointment by the day. You do have to call and make an appointment. If you're interested in having these guys process your birds, call them the day you receive them. So if you order chicks, you get them, call those guys. They'll walk you through. They're all, all just a fountain of wealth of information. Um, anything you want to know about chickens, these guys know. They also raise out quite a few for out, throughout the year. So, very cool. Thank you to j, j Poultry Processing. Thanks for the tour at the end of the video. And uh, that's about it. So, um, we'll get the tractors moved up for the year, move them out of the horse pasture. That needs to still be fenced in. But, it was a pretty cool process for someone who's not a chicken fan. My wife really wanted to do this. Uh, we built the tractors. Go back. There's a video on how we built our tractors, why we built them a little heavier duty than what most people do. Um, and now after doing two batches, there's some changes I'm going to make for next year. So thank you for all the support. Thank you guys for everything you've done. Chris, thank you. Um, 
six months after we started this channel, I almost lost my life in a work related accident. It really tore me up, almost lost my arm. And uh, it was just good to, you know, I went from being a very social person, you know, always around a bunch of people at work to kind of being not a prisoner in my own home. But, you know, there were some hard times. It's good just to have these people that you really don't know personally, but are always checking up on you. And Chris was one of those. And there's been a lot of them on this channel, David and Gary. Um, I feel like these guys are very close friends and I've never really met any of these guys personally. So take care, everybody, from the bottom of my heart, my family's heart. Thank you for watching. Thanks for the support. Thanks for all the continued prayers of everything that we've been through. And there's, uh, there's still hurdles that we're jumping. Luckily, they're just not as often as they used to be. Take care, everybody. We'll catch you on the next one.